in order to graph this exponential, we can do a table, and we're going to do that to help us graph it. But it might help to first start looking at these four things. So we're going to start with these four things here. Where is the horizontal asymptote? Well, what you should know is this number back here is how the graph's being pushed up or down, which is where the asymptote is. So this number right there is the asymptote. So my horizontal asymptote is y equals negative 3. Okay? So again, that is my horizontal asymptote. Um, I'll graph it later once I get some values. So that's the first thing. That's where it's been shifted down 3 is what it's saying. The graph's going to go down 3. Now, the percent rate of change. Okay, let's find the percent rate of change. Well, isn't it related to R? If R is 2... To find the percent rate of change, you want to find out how far that is from 1. So how far is 2 from 1? So what I'm going to do here, right underneath here, I'm going to go 2 minus 1 equals 1. So is that 1%? No. It's 1 away, which is what percent? You have to think of that as cents. That's 100 cents. Okay, so this is 100 percent change. So we're growing by a hundred percent because it is one bigger than one and that is a hundred percent growth. Now let's go to the bottom. Is this a growth or decay? Well is the R bigger than one or smaller than one? Bigger. It's bigger so this is a growth. The reason we know that again is because it's bigger than 1. If it was smaller than 1, it would be a decay, and it, then it's the same thing as how far from 1. The percent is just how far from 1 it is changing. So the last thing is a y-intercept. Well, normally the y-intercept is that number, correct? Yeah. But doesn't this shift it down 3? So it normally would be a 5, but it's been shifted down 3. So it normally would be 5, but I'm shifting down 3, so what is it? 2. So my y-intercept is 0, 2. There we go. We have some specific information which will help us graph. Now, I'm not going to plot these quite yet because I'll make a table because some of my values might have some weird alterations. So I'm going to make a table, a sideways table going this way. This is x, this is f of x, and I'm going to plug in 0, I'm going to plug in 1, and 2, and see what happens. And see what happens. All right? Now, okay, so what would be my 0 term? Well, isn't that my y-intercept? So isn't it 2? Okay, now, questions? What, before I did the video, oops, I forgot the pause. So where this one can get tricky, normally you double the zero term, and that would be four, but that's not how you do this one. The minus three messes things up. Aren't you going to double five? What do you get when you double five? What's five times two? Ten. And then you're going to minus three. So this would actually be 10 minus 3 is 7. That is going to get a little tricky because this minus 3 is messing you up. Now, wasn't this 10? This is where it gets tricky. Aren't you now taking 5, multiplying by 2, and now multiplying by 2 again? Got it? This is where it gets a little tricky. All right, so for this one, aren't you going to multiply by 2 twice? So what's 5 times 2 twice? So 5 times 2 is 10, times 2 is 20, minus 3. So this is 5 times 2 times 2, then minus 3. So that would be 17. Now that right there gets a little tricky, making the table. Let's graph it. What's our biggest number? 17. So I'm going to, for this graph, I'm going to go by 2s. 
I'm going to go by ones this way. I'm going to go by twos this way. So let's put our asymptote. Can you put your asymptote? Isn't it negative three? So when your asymptote be right there. Do you remember the asymptote right down here? Negative three? Could I put my y-intercept? Could I put my y-intercept? Let me put that real quick. So my y-intercept is at zero, two. So I have my asymptote right here and my y-intercept right there. So I got, these, I got this point, I got this line. And isn't it going to be growing? Isn't this growing like this? Do we have a value seven here? Okay, so we're going to go to 7. So at 1, we're going to be at 7. Can I fit 17? No. We're good. All right. So we started at 2 because isn't that 5 higher than the asymptote? 5 higher than the asymptote. Now watch this. What's 5 times 2? Two. Isn't that 10 higher than the asymptote? See, it's negative 3. Isn't that up 10? It's working. It's just been all shifted. This negative 3 is really, really annoying. Okay, it's very annoying. And then you make your graph. Here is where using your graphing calculator does help to get the table. Because this negative 3 is going to mess everything up. But... You should be able to, once you get this, you should be get your y-intercept and your asymptote. And then finding the change is where it's going to get a little bit tricky.